What are the top five places to go if you want to learn the craft of music composition? Now, as a composer myself, I've been through a lot of school, and I mean a lot. After high school, I went to USC for four years, then to Juilliard for two, and now I'm starting my sixth year as a doctorate student at Columbia University, all for music composition. So in today's video, I'm just gonna focus on the top five undergraduate programs for composition. But first, we're gonna to have to lay some ground rules for what makes a great program for aspiring composers. Come, let's begin. The number one thing to consider are the teachers. These are the folks that you're gonna be interacting with every single week, whether that be through a class, or through one-on-one -on -one instruction. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you listen to a sampling of some of these professors' music so that you can assess whether this is something that you can envision yourself writing in the future or at least respecting what they do as artists. The next thing you wanna consider is do you prefer to work with someone that's more in the middle stages of their career, they're very busy with commissions, doing a lot of things outside of school, or would you prefer to be with someone that's closer to retirement age, for example, where they probably want to give you more sage advice, more wisdom, and they probably are a little bit less busy outside the university? These are two really great uh, types of professors, of course, but they're gonna have very different styles in terms of the way they teach. The second thing you need to keep in mind is the environment. And when I say environment, I mean, do you see yourself belonging to this new environment that you're gonna be a part of? For example, if you go to a conservatory, you're only gonna be surrounded by people that want to pursue music, and it's very unlikely that you'll make any friends outside that circle. On the other hand, you might wanna be part of a school of music that is part of a larger research institution where you have perhaps the business school there, the film school, maybe there's a visual arts school, dance school, and all sorts of other subjects that you can interact with and also make friends with from all the other different departments. Now I have experience attending both these kinds of environments. For my undergraduate degree, I went to the Thorne School of Music, which is part of the greater University of Southern California. And for my master's degree, I went to the Juilliard School, which is a conservatory, of course. Now, I recommend for 18, 19, 20-year-olds that are just starting their journey to go to the former, to go to a place like USC, for example, which is a school of music within a larger university. And I think that's because it would give you more opportunities to meet other people from other disciplines. Perhaps halfway through your degree, you might decide, hey, I don't really want to be a composer that badly. Maybe I want to do something else. If you went to a conservatory for your undergraduate degree, there is a lot of pressure to finish the degree and also not leave music. There is a little bit of that pressure that happens as you go through a degree like that. So all of these, except for one, there is one that I definitely have to include that is a conservatory as part of my top five. But you'll see in the top five that I have coming up, I don't really include any conservatories, but we'll see which one I do. Number three are the alumni. You wanna find out who exactly are these people graduating from these schools? What are they up to right now? Are they people that you can see yourself reaching out to perhaps to ask them for advice? This is very important because these are the people that are actually pushing on the legacy of these schools, especially in the composition department. And number four are the scholarship and financial opportunities. Now, it's just the reality there are gonna be some schools that offer more scholarship and financial aid than others. So you wanna be aware of that as you're going through the application process. And trust me, you don't wanna feel like you got robbed after attending four years of an expensive university. So with all that out of the way, let's buckle up and get started with number five, the University of Michigan at Ann Arbor's School of Music, Theater, and Dance. In terms of the teachers, it's gonna be hard to beat this lineup of professors. You got people like Michael Dougherty and Bright Shang, for example, who are really into big orchestral and band music, as well as smaller chamber ensembles. So if you're into writing things like that, they're definitely gonna help you out over at this university. I'm gonna leave their links for all of these teachers and all of these programs down in the description below. In terms of the environment, you're gonna be surrounded by an elite institution at the University of Michigan at Ann Arbor with all these different kinds of schools, not just the School of Music, Theater, and Dance. And since you're in a smaller town like Ann Arbor, you're not gonna be swallowed up by city life like in Los Angeles and New York or Chicago. But if you want to go to a city like Detroit, it's only a 45 minute drive away. In terms of the alumni, there are some really fantastic composers working today that got their bachelor's degree from this university, like Stacey Garrup, Nina Shaker, 
and Sean Yeager. If you haven't checked out their music, I'm going to leave it down in the description below. And finally, in terms of scholarship and financial aid, since you are part of a larger R1 institution, they're going to have lots of scholarships and financial aid available for you. All you have to do is make sure you talk to the financial aid office before you apply and see where you fit within their larger scheme of figuring out how much aid they're going to give to their incoming students. Let's move on to number four, Rice University's Shepherd School of Music located in Houston, Texas. Now, just like the University of Michigan at Ann Arbor, you're going to have here a school of music that's within a larger research institution, Rice University, again, one of the most elite universities in the United States. And in terms of the professors, again, you really can't beat what they have here at Rice University. People like Kareem Alzand, people like Pierre Jalbert, both mid-career composers that are very busy outside the university. So if you want someone that is busy and doing things and you can emulate what they're doing and also look forward to what they're doing in their careers, this is a great place to be. In terms of the city of Houston itself, not a lot of people know this, but it is a big cultural center for music. You have the Houston Symphony, you have the Houston Ballet, the Grand Opera, you have new music ensembles like Musica, and you also have programs like the Camera in town. So it's a really, really rich cultural place to be. You don't have to be just in New York or LA to have a music career. Houston is also another great place that's spring up in terms of its cultural activity. In terms of recent alumni, one of them is the composer Hilary Purrington, who always sings the praises of Rice University and the amazing time she had in Houston. I'll leave her website down in the description below. And in terms of financial aid, they are very, very generous over at that School of Music. Almost everybody has some sort of financial aid or scholarship, and they want to make sure that they are presented as a welcoming partner in your music creating endeavors. So I highly recommend Rice University. Number three is going to be the Thorne School of Music at the University of Southern California, located in Los Angeles. Now, I'm a bit biased. I, of course, have some personal experience since I finished from USC as an undergraduate composition major. At USC, they probably have the most diverse array of composition professors. You have people that are closer to the later stages of their career, like Donald Crockett and Frank DeKelly. Then you have those that are more their early mid stage of their career, like Ted Hearn, Nina Young, and Christopher Trapani. And then they have a new hire named Moore Mother that just joined the faculty in the past year. So I would definitely check out all these composers. I've listed them down in the description below because USC, I have to say, is just one of the most amazing times of my life, being an undergraduate student there, experiencing what life was like as part of a school of music in the greater research institution. I was part of a fraternity. I was in the marching band for a semester. I made tons of friends outside of the School of Music. Of course, you're in Los Angeles, and that's where I grew up myself, so I got to stay closer to home. So there are a lot of factors in terms of the teachers and the environment that I really enjoyed at USC. In terms of the bachelor's degree alumni, you have people like Jules Pagram who are very heavily involved in orchestral and band music as well as film music. And then you have people like Andrew Norman who became one of the professors of music composition at the Juilliard School. And then you have people like Torin Borodale who went on to score the Netflix series Lock and Key. In terms of scholarships and financial aid, I found that USC was also very generous. They offered me, for example, a trustee scholarship, which is a merit scholarship that covers full tuition for four years. Years. They also offer a presidential scholarship that offers half tuition for four years. And they also offer a myriad of other scholarships, which you can find out on their website. So if I love USC so much, why is it at number three? Why isn't it at number two or even number one? Well, there are a couple of reasons for that. So let's move on to number two, the Curtis Institute of Music. So I said in the very beginning that I much prefer going to a school of music within a larger research institution, but I need to include Curtis on this list for a myriad of reasons. So the first thing we have to talk about is the exciting new composition faculty that Curtis just hired for fall 2022. These include Steve Mackey, a big time composer in the orchestral realm who also plays electric guitar and who also teaches at Princeton University just about an hour away. You have Jonathan Bailey Holland, another big orchestral and band composer. Then you have Amy Beth Kirsten, who's very into vocal writing and writing theatrical based and operatic based 
based works. Then very exciting for me personally is a composer that is around my age, Nick DiBerardino, who also graduated from the Curtis Institute and then later got his PhD from Princeton University. And then the last member of this all-star faculty is Richard Daniel Poor, who's been teaching at Curtis for many, many years before that. He's the only one that's actually been on the faculty before any of these other composers. Of course, I'll list their details down in the description below. In terms of the alumni, there are many, many, many of them to choose from, but I just went ahead and went with three of the ones that I know personally, Gabriella Smith, Alyssa Weinberg, and Emily Cooley. I've also listed their websites down in the description below. And in terms of the scholarships, you can't really beat what Curtis has to offer. It's completely tuition free for the entire four years, no questions asked. So of course, if you are someone that is of course a little bit more experienced going into college, this might be the place for you. It doesn't really matter if it's not part of a bigger landscape. It's really hard to beat going to a place like this with this kind of faculty and this kind of scholarship opportunity. And now let's hear it for a drum roll, please, for our top choice for music composition programs for undergraduates. And that's gotta be the like button and the subscribe button for this channel. But seriously, if you haven't done that already, please do so if you've gotten something out of this so far. Thank you so much for doing that. But seriously, let's get on to the number one program for music composition. And that would be the place that is closest to you in terms of locality, number one. Number two, the place where they're going to offer you the most scholarship and financial aid. And number three, the place where you can potentially study other things while you're going to be at that university. So why do I say all these things? Well, the first thing is that a composition major is someone that should be well-rounded, should be able to study other disciplines while they're at school, and should also be someone that's open to perhaps trying other things. Maybe composition is not going to be the thing that you end up doing. I have to say I have a lot of friends that came up with me at all the various universities that I've been a part of that are no longer pursuing composition. So it's very important that you stay open-minded and don't just feel like you have to go to one of these four schools. But if you have to study composition, try to go somewhere that is local to you that can offer you as much financial aid as possible and is somewhere that you feel that you can be more broad in terms of the other things that you might wanna study two, three, maybe even four years down the line in your undergraduate program. Thank you so much for watching and take care.